lots of progress on the B3. The front end is mostly buttoned back up. I still need to put everything in the engine back together, but at least the front suspension is uh, mostly bolted up. I've removed the drive shaft. And I actually have the rear end lifted up because the rear subframe has been removed. So you can kind of see a little bit of the cracks in the subframe bushings. So I'm glad I went through, went with uh, taking it out so that everything can be replaced. All of the bushings on the control arms will also be replaced. And then on the trailing arms, the, uh, the ball joint, the upper ball joint and the lower ball joint will also be replaced. And of course, the rear trailing arm bushings. So it looks like on the Alpina B3 3.2, they did not put in the reinforcing plates like they did on the B8. Looks pretty rust free. So that's good. I may actually come underneath here and clean, clean a little bit of it up. I mean, it's going to go to the dry ice blaster, but once everything's assembled, not everything will be accessible. So might as well clean what I can. Exhaust bushings, or the exhaust hangers are kind of shot. Still see some of the original Cosmoline in the fuel tank. So here is the open diff that came out of the B3. Um, it feels a little strange. If you can hear that noise. I don't think it's supposed to sound like that. Unfortunately, this one over here is an LSD, so it just behaves a little bit differently, and I'm not sure if, uh, if that's a good comparison, but it doesn't seem like it should sound or feel like that. So I'll have to do some more research and figure out whether I need to rebuild this diff or not. Today's going to be bushings and more bushings. Taking apart the trunk area so I can get to the rear shock mount bolts here and here. It was relatively straightforward. Uh, first I had to remove the C pillars and basically they just pull down. You just grab the top of it and pull it outward and then there's a little clip that holds it in. After the C pillar comes out then the cover here for the seat belt had to come off as well. There's one screw that holds it on. You can see the threads where the screw goes in. So after that comes out, the trim here under the window, uh, there are three screws. There's one here, here, and here. And 
Uh, you'll have to remove this D pillar as well. There's a screw here. And once that's out, that just comes out. And then you'll be able to remove the, the under window trim. In terms of the cover here, there's just one expanding clip that goes uh, here, went here. Once that comes out, uh, you'll, you will have to lo loosen this piece here uh, for the seat post, uh, for, the, for the seat to lock in. Once that's loosened, you will w wiggle that enough to get the whole cover off. Alright, so I'm taking a break from finishing the subframe. I was able to change out the bushings on the inner control arms. It took me a while to kind of figure out combination of sockets, etc. to make things fit. I was able to do the diff bushing. However, I was, have not been able to remove the subframe bushings yet. Uh, the reason for that is that the tool I was using started to bend. So you can kind of notice that this tool, it's kind of spreading out a little bit. Uh, and you can see there's stress marks here in the metal as well, so you can kind of see it better here. So that's a little bit of a roadblock. I'll have to pick up a new tool before I can continue the uh, subframe pushings. I do have the radiator assembly pre-assembled, uh, pre ready to go in. However, I am waiting for new clips here for the wiring harness so there are clips that hold this harness in place all across this um, this rail I mean most people would probably just reinstall the radiator without bothering but since I'm in here might as well replace these uh, broken plastic clips I've put the alternator back in as well um, hopefully the alternator works after the rebuild and I've installed an aluminum uh, thermostat housing along with a new uh, thermostat.